Okay, hello everyone. Um, and I am officially now a booktuber. Um, how did we get here? When I was in New York, I was visiting so many bookstores and obviously I was flipping through so many books. I noticed a pattern that when I pull out a book um, and I see that it's written by a male author, I immediately put it back. I'm like, I'm not buying this. I'm not spending my hard-earned money on something that was produced by a man. So out of the 60 books I read this, this year, only about 20% of them are written by men and I am going to rank of them so you don't have to. And I'm gonna start from the worst one and we're going to the best one, okay? First of all, one of the most famous male authors we actually get the pleasure or the displeasure to know is Murakami. My first Murakami book is none other than Norwegian Wood. I liked it um, for what it is. But at the same time, shit got bad. That's why he at the bottom of the list. Um, <laughs> Because I hated the sex and people say that oh, that's the male gaze and like Murakami, you know, we have to give him credit because he gives a really good depiction of the male gaze I'm like, I'm sorry, but like aren't we have enough shit about the male gaze already? Like don't we all know it by now? Like just by living in the world? <laughs> I don't need a man to <laughs> tell me how accurate his depiction of male, a male gaze is because I know that shit but anyways um, I, I liked it it was hard to like but I liked it and then my friend recommended me South of the Border and West of the Sun um, is also one of his most famous work and I, I don't have a book here with me because I borrowed it from the library because I am an economical woman hated it hated it with a fucking passion like I've never read something that makes me so mad like he obviously can write and that is the kind of story he chose to write and it made me so mad the entire story is like just this one man is getting so horny and whines about stuff while being horny like that's the worst thing I want to read about like how oh yeah he's successful he's rich and all of that shit but she's he's unhappy because um, he could not get together with this uh, woman that he loved since childhood and I was like bitch Maybe just go to fucking therapy The characters in Norwegian Wood is horny too, but south the border and west of the sun Out of the chart and I was talking to my friends like is it because I'm asexual? Is that why I just can't handle the sex and they're like no, it's not because you're asexual It's because the sex is bad so yeah so the reason why, <laughs> one of the biggest reason why I don't like Murakami is the sex was actually bad. Um, so there you go. And then the second book that I hate is Bookstagram Favorite, Someone Who Will Love You With All Your Damage Glory by, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce his name, but I'm just going to try. This by is written by Raphael Ba Waxberg um, and he is apparently the creator of Bojack Horseman which I have no idea what it is is it a podcast is he a colleague of mine I don't know anyways first of all the title we all buy this I'm sure people who buy this book buy this for the title and the cover which I am one of those. Um, no shame. We love a good title. Okay, this book is a short story collection and I think there are about two stories that were good to me. The rest just reads like someone got drunk and post on Facebook. Those are the rest of the, <laughs> the short stories in this collection. But the two that were good was I think the one I liked the most or Miss Connection um it's just about these two people that on this rides the um brooklyn q train to manhattan if you take public transportation you will understand this pain and then there's one about moving to different cities like this girl that moves to different cities because 
every time she has a heart break, she has to move. Um, she, think, she thinks that the city or the place that she was staying was the problem. Um, but nothing really get fixed because obviously what was broken is the inside. And this one is recommended to me by a friend. Um, she really liked it. I think she rated it like five stars. Um, so maybe you'll like it too. Who knows? Maybe I just have bizarre taste. So yeah, I promise this this video isn't a isn't like my friend recommended me this book and it was shit. Like that's not that's not it. Um, we're getting into the good stuff. I promise. And then we have none other than Oscar Wilde, The Picture of Dorian Gray. This is a classic. Um, I don't think I need to get into what it's about uh, because it's a classic. We should all kind of know by now. Uh, but I'm not so hot about classics because I am traumatized. I am traumatized from the time I was in school and I was forced to read classics and write essays about them. Like, I am not doing that again as an adult. But this one was so good. Like, this is really good. Uh, the, the reason why it's still at the bottom of the list is because I've read other stuff that I enjoyed more. Um, but yeah, there's nothing much for me to say. She's good. Read her. I've read four books by this author, um, Frederick Backman. I read four books of him this year. So, you can say that he's my favorite author, but you can't because he's not. And the first work of him that I read was actually A Man Called Uber, as, you know, his most famous one. Um, I read it in high school and then I listened to the audiobook again this year. And I wasn't very hot about it. Like, it was alright. In the summer, my friend recommended me um, Anxious People, one of his famous work too. I mean, all of his work is famous because he's a white man in literature, you know? Like, people read, eat that shit up. But it, the title is Anxious People. And guess who is Anxious People? Me. There's a bank robber, but they robbed a cashless bank. So the police got called in, they panicked, and they ran into an open house. So that's how the story starts. Um, and it's so funny, and the, the way that the story was unfolded is very clever. Um, do you still get the warm and the human aspect that you would expect from a Backman work? Um, but I think the choices he made with regard to unfolding the plot was very clever and he dropped like easter eggs here and there and it makes the story very gripping and if you're in the reading slum i would highly recommend anxious people and then my friend the same friend i think apparently backman is her favorite author but anyways the same friend told me to read fair town we all read that town like you probably have seen this on instagram it's a series. So there are three books in this series and Bear Town is the first one. It's a it's about Bear Town. <laughs> and in this town it's a small town and like far away in the woods where there are bears and the snows and all of that. Their sport is hockey. So they're very passionate about the sports and um, the reason why is because that this town is dying and hockey like if the team of Bear Town wins they will attract more sponsors and you know tourists and that will revive the economy of the town but things happen like traumatic events happen disaster happens and you'll see and i think it's a really um it's a very profound way of depicting male culture from sports culture and then not spoiler alert because you'll get it but there's um rape uh, in this book as well and i think the way that he was uh, addressing rape culture in this book was also well done. One of my criticisms for this book is that by the end, um, the rape victim was written in a way that oh she forgave everything and she's uh, she has a big heart and, and, and she's trying to move on um, and I, I don't really like it because it feels so rushed but that brings me to the second book, As Against You. And um, also again, after the question for Us Against You is, 
after the traumatic events that were happening in Beartown, like can the people of the town and the hockey players um, revive the things that they've lost? Um, so yeah, there's a third book called The Winners and it's long, it's like 800 pages. I was at Barnes and Noble, I think, and I flipped through the first page and I read the first passage and I was so triggered. I was so upset. I had to go to a different section and I, I was like, I'm not ready to read this book. Um, and if you read, read Bear Town and once again to you, and Benji is not your favorite character, get your shit together because he should be. I think this one is unexpected for me. Like I didn't expect it to like Memorial by Brian Washington this much. Hello everyone, it's Editing Quinn here. Um, I'm sorry, but I lost the footage where I was talking about Memorial by Brian Washington, but it's really good. It's have very good representation of queer people and BIPOC people that is not stereotyped and it's not um, kind of like written for white people so we love that and it's really good it made me cry so please read it so panenka is a term in soccer or football because i recently had a man told me that it's not called soccer it's called football and you know what i love it when men explain things to me you know anyways um panenka in football a penalty technique in which the taker chips the ball artfully into the center of the goal, counting on the likelihood that the goalkeeper will have dived into either side. It's a really good story because I think it's, it is to show that coming of age isn't just for teenagers and that you can grow and you can rebuild or you can start over again. Um, later in life. It's quite charming, it's short too, so if you're intimidated by the length of Bear Town, Paninka is a good one. And then we're getting to the top two, and you should be excited. I have here Open Water by Caleb Nelson. It's about these two people um, meeting at a pub in the UK, I think London, and they start to form a friendship and later on they start to fall in love with each other. Um, so it depicts this kind of notion about like falling in love with your best friend. And the writing is very lyrical and poetic and it's just beautiful. Like this is like literature with a capital L. At the same time, the book also addresses uh, police brutality and just like microaggression in the UK and also masculinity in a black body because black masculinity is very different from the masculinity we all know, the white one. I don't know, I just kept saying it's really good, but it packed a punch. I think it really hits me. There's like so many things that is done beyond what was given in this book. So I highly recommend. And then the creme de la creme, the man that we're all simping for. Well, not really, that would be weird. But the man that get me thinking, that get me loving is Kazuo Ishiguro with Never Let Me Go. I mean, the man won the Nobel Prize, so like, this must be good, right? So I read this with my friend um, in our book club right after Murakami. <laughs> It's quite ironic, Kazuo Ishiguro and um, Haruki Murakami are often pitched together even though they write about very different things and the writing style is very different too. Um, I think they just pitched together because their names are Japanese but Kazuo, Kazuo Ishiguro is um, British, he's Japanese British and he moved to um, England very young, I think when he was five or something. This is a sci-fi dystopian but i don't think the sci-fi and is really relevant here like there's not much science fiction into it but dystopian to that's very different from what you would expect from a dystopian because, because usually if we talk about 
that genre we think about like the Hunger Games or where you know there's a group of people that were different and being oppressed by other groups and then they start a fight and a revolution and you know people died yada 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 but and never let me go they don't fight like nobody fight and none of them thought of like escaping the fate that was assigned to them which i think is a really um interesting approach um to dystopia and i watched one of um Ishiguro interview and he said that he was not interested in writing a story about brave slaves um he was more interested in stories where oppressed people um stay where they are and what keeps them just stay in that space instead of um initiating a fight and i think that's interesting because it's really to show how the biggest success of system of, of oppression is that to keep people agreeing to the oppression um, without even acknowledging it so never let me go is a really good uh, reflection of the reality that we have in that re regard and uh, it got me crying it got me rooting for them I'm excited to read more of Ishiguro book and that's it is the top one this year the man himself with the nobel prize um how predictable but anyways this this is, this is the video thank you for watching uh you will never see me again or maybe you will if i feel motivated enough but thank you for watching